Hey teams, I'm Coach John Burnett, and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the various motors you may or may not use here in FRC. Before we begin, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another episode, and then leave a comment below with your team name and number so we know who is tuning in. Keep in mind new motors are introduced nearly every season, and that what we speak of today is only true for the 2022 preseason time. And today, I am turning the reins over to our former student captain, Max Kinnison, to walk you through some motors and their applications. Now let's get to the motors and throw it to Max because this is how we robot. Hi everybody, I'm Max. Now I'm here to talk to you about motors for your FRC robot. First up is the sub subsystem every robot is going to have year after year, the drivetrain. Robots need to move around the field and are generally using these motors for the entirety of the match. So we are looking for not only the raw power but the ability to be stalled in, in a pushing match without smoking. This means commonly we are going to use some of the biggest motors available. Often newer teams find themselves using sim motors. These motors are available in your kit of parts and are sold by both AndyMark and Vex. One great aspect of the sim is they're larger enough to act as a big heat sink, therefore much less likely to smoke during a pushing match. The most common setup is to pair these motors on either side of the drivetrain placed into a common gearbox. This would be to referred as a two sim drivetrain. Some gearboxes can accept up to three sims or equivalent motors. Why two? Well, in short, the math works out such that if you try to use only one on each side, then the amount of current drawn from the battery to move around a 125 pound robot would trip the breakers, or at least heat the wires up and motors to the point of smoking. So why not three? If you use three motors, then each does not need to work as hard, and therefore you will accelerate more, but perhaps this is more than you need. Another two power slots is taken up on the PDP, another two speed controllers, in which each of these of clocking it at over two pounds, this is extra weight that could be used elsewhere. Other common drivetrain motors are the mini sims. These are great as the center shaft relies on a bearing instead of a bushing like the sim does. This means less friction and therefore less heat over time. Their power is only two-thirds of the sim's counterpart, so you would need three of these to make up for the power of two sims. If you want to get fancy and go brushless, then the Neo from Rev Robotics or the Falcon 500 from Vex Pro is the choice for you. These are each more powerful and better in the long run for drivetrains in our opinion. But there is more tech involved. With them being brushless, specific speed controllers are required. Notice the third wires coming off the Neos. Never connect these directly to a battery for any prototyping as you will permanently damage these insides and risk turning these pricey motors into pricey paperweights. If you are one of our awesome rookie teams watching this vi video, then we recommend sticking with the Sims for now as they get the job done. These motors during your next off season to learn the ins and outs of their con controls before using them in the build season and competition. Now let's talk about your light duty super chassis subsystem. This would be something like an intake mechanism. Something where an action is needed to be done, but not a lot of power is required. Remember those sims needed to push around all 125 pounds of your robot? These motors will be dealing with less than 10 pounds of action, more or less. Since the duty is lighter, we can use smaller and lighter motors. These are motors like the Bag Motor or the RS775 Pro from Vex Robotics in Andymark or the Neo 550 from Rev Robotics. Like the Neos before, the 550s require the special SparkMax speed controllers as they are brushless, so we encourage you to tinker with these in the off season, but perhaps try these other two in your first years. The Bag Motors at a first glance look like mini Sims. You are not far off. While this is considerably less powerful, the weight and size are much smaller 
and the speed is much higher, this means for an intake system, you will want to gear down these motors as therefore you will always see these paired with planetary gearboxes of some kind. We explore the Versa planetary gearbox in another video which we highly recommend pairing with this motor. For an intake system we recommend gearing down by at least 49 to 1 or more. The great part about using bag motors for an intake is much like the sim and mini sim motors their casing is, and mass is used as heat sink and therefore can be stalled under light duty without smoking. The RS775 Pro is much more powerful and spins even faster, but there are a couple of issues with using them. Firstly, we would not want to use these on an intake mechanism, which works by stalling the motors. These motors are fan cooled and therefore will smoke within a few seconds of stall torques. Secondly are the connectors on the back. Unlike the bag motor, which can be connected by an Anderson pole, these require female spade connectors, and the thin metal for the power connection points will break off if bent too far just a few times. If you choose to use these, we highly recommend connector boards made by our Australian friends at Aussie Boards or the equivalent connectors sold by Vexpro. Notice the use of Anderson pole connectors now. This does not mean the RS775 Pro cannot be used for some heavy duty action, but they cannot be used in a stalling manner. For example, in 2017, we used a pair of these motors to drive our climbing mechanism, which we geared down 49 to 1. These small motors lifted our 125 pound robot three feet into the air in a matter of a few seconds. We then let the natural back drive of the gearbox preventing the falling and therefore never stall the motor. Let's talk about another common use for a couple of these motors. After you have a solid drivetrain, you can start working your way into different mechanisms on your robot. You don't need heavy duty motors like the drivetrain motors to run a smaller mechanism. Some smaller mechanisms require light duty motors to run, like elevators. They, they require less force to move so you don't need a heavy duty motor. Some motors that would be good to run on an elevator would be a BAG, Neo 550, or an RS775 Pro. These are all good motors that don't need the force to move an entire robot. They are much smaller objects and don't need as much force. Another common mechanism in a challenge is a shooting wheel. Whether one-sided or two-sided, the mechanism needs a high-speed wheel that can spin up quickly. This means we are going to look at perhaps the RS775 motors as the load from the launched game piece will take place quickly so as to not stall out the motors. Connecting a pair of these motors with a small gear down of 3 to 1 ratio could be your solution. Or maybe we look at the mini sim with a 1 to 1 gear ratio to get a similar speed. If we were to use a full sim, then we may end up with having heating issues over the course of a match, and the weight may be prohibited. If we were to use a bag motor, then we lack the power. Power would cause the motors to slow down too much in between shots. This is a concern with the parameters known as spin-up time, which is the period needed to get the shooting wheel up to speed either from rest or in between shots. This is why we look at, to use a more powerful motor even if the bag could offer the same overall rotation speed. For those with the time and desire, the Neo or the Falcon 500 offer great shooting power and speed but come with the, the additional complexities of their speed controllers as I said earlier. Remember to always read the manuals for the full list of all legal motors and motor controllers in the given season. Your team will have access to many motors, not just those included here today. We are only offering our opinions and lessons learned from our past failures so your team can be more successful faster. So decide what type of mechanism you are looking to motorize and then choose your motors wisely. Power, speed, weight, and stalling are all points to consider when you want to energize your machines. Thank you for watching and being here with us today. Remember to leave a comment with your team name and number so we know what robots to cheer for this season. And always, subscribe to this channel. Keep finding out more on This Is How We Robot.